Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now my goal is for at the end of this video is so you guys can see other ways that you can earn online which is today is going to be how to be a video editor. We have an amazing special guest for you guys and if you're new here welcome to my channel hit that subscribe button right there so you guys can see weekly updates on how to work online. Now again our guest is a very special friend of mine. He was actually one of the first people who believed in me being a coach. He was one of the first people who got the virtual ate coaching before there was even such a thing as virtual ate coaching. Uh, he was started out, uh, we became friends over a networking event. We, we we got to know each other a lot of times during co weird coffee times and we would, he would randomly chat me on Messenger like, Leanne, how do I do this? And of course I taught him. So <laughs> uh, without further ado, the guy who became, who was came from a real estate agent was very successful. I'm might add to becoming someone who is a kick butt video editor that's why our, it's our title for today's video without further ado here is philip john yap hi philip hi <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for the really kind introduction for your guys' reference, this whole video is not going to be edited by me. Philip's editing this whole video. Yeah. Just I, so you guys know. Uh, so it will have some weird effects that I would never have put on my own videos. And it's, of course, his way. His way of showing his own skills. So, Philip, how did you get started working online other than the story that I just said? <laughs> Before well, you met uh, me. Just as you said, actually, that we met in a networking event. But I would like to share a little bit of a background what happened before that. So I was a realtor um, living in Cebu, Philippines. And I was at a point in my career where it was, it was kind of getting a little bit stressful because of the traffic and all of the clients and having to um, stress about looking for, looking for work, looking for, looking for your next big sale while keeping up with the overhead expenses. I knew I needed to find an alternative to how I was generating income at the time. Because I'll say that, sure, I was a bit fortunate to be able to generate sales from real estate before. But it wasn't something that, hey, I was making a sale every single week, every single month. And at the time, I just wanted something a little bit more constant, a little bit more something that would get my mind into a routine and have it working every day, improving, and uh, what I believe is Kaizen, which is continuous improvement. Yeah, so when I attended their networking event, originally I was attending the networking event to look for clients for real estate. But it just so happens that after going around, meeting people, I landed with my friend and I, we landed seated next next to each other and we asked about <laughs> hey what are you what's your on what are your businesses and this person you um <laughs> said that hey i'm running an online business i pro like a bpo and i was curious at that time because at the time i didn't know if it was really possible to earn a single peso online because my whole life i've been earning money out there in the real world like grinding and so on and so forth so i never knew the impossibility of earning a single peso online so that kind of you know sparked my interest and um next thing led to another i attended a tech summit and i got to know the ins and outs of working as a freelancer what's it like and slowly by slowly um i shiftly i slowly transitioned from being an offline career into now an online career. Okay. Awesome. So with that, what was the skill? Of course, it's going to be this. What was the skill that, why, you know, why did you start with, uh, you know, video editing? What was the skill that you really thought like, okay, this is, this is the thing that I actually want to go into switching from offline to online. Okay. So uh, this might be a really weird explanation, but initially because I took into consideration what resources I had at the time, I knew that I had a powerful editing computer at home, so I felt like I needed to go with a skill that you could utilize the hardware that I already had. So it was either programming or video editing. <laughs> but I felt like the learning, learning to code was really such a huge learning curve. So it was either programming or video editing. But I felt like it, I learned, I felt like learning to code was such a huge learning curve, so I stuck with editing. So that's how I decided to land into video editing. Yeah. <laughs> but then you, you learn really fast. I saw like how fast you were able to pick up 
uh, video editing. So so far in the year, I think you've already we've already been friends for about a year. We met like a year ago already. What has oh, been so yeah. far like the most surprising thing about working online? Uh, the most surprising thing about working online actually is that people are so much nicer online than in <laughs> real life. That's like, right. <laughs> like in the past year or even say half a year since that's actually what I want to um, officially describe the start of my career, like maybe a half a year ago. I've worked with clients from Hawaii, from US, from Australia, from Dubai, and they are actually quite pleasant to talk to. And I probably think it's because <laughs> of the working environment. I know it's because being a, I know this because being a realtor, realtor in the past was getting stuck in traffic, trying to get to your next meeting could really piss you off. And when you get the client, you're no longer in the right mood to deliver your mm. best service. As to compared to working from home in your, you know, your house clothes or in a cafe in front, you know, yeah. in front of a PC, people are generally much more calm, and you know they be they become really nice people to talk to. So maybe out of ten people I've worked with, just a ratio, nine people are so much nicer than <laughs> in real life. So yeah, that's the most surprising thing about working online. Yeah. And of course, and you, you've come across it. Like you've, you've, in the short span, again, in the short span that you've been working online, I've like introduced you to a lot of other coaches who are so nice, who are so open, who are willing to just give you knowledge without you even paying for it, who mm -hmm. are so just, wanting to help you in any way. So that's that's an, that's definitely another perk of Yeah, and, and very surprisingly, because I currently have uh, one of these um, clients of mine, actually, who I edit a few of his YouTube videos. It's just that he knows that he is hiring me, but when we chat about my work and how he likes my work, he actually gives me advice on how to, you know, turn my career into a business, how to, mm. how to, you know, leverage your work and so on and so forth. So actually, it's really surprising because, because you would think that if you are with an employer, especially in the offline world, they only care about you delivering your best service for their company, where in mm. fact, in reality, in the online world, people already generalized the idea that, hey, um, I hired a copywriter, I hired an editor, I hired a graphic designer, but I know that he is also working for someone else and not me. He has a life to sort of provide, not only mine. So I want to help him as much as I can, deliver as much value as I can in return of the value that he has given me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's such and it's also something that not a lot of people realize because they go in and listen and hearing all of this and I don't I think you that's the lucky thing about you is I don't think you got exposed to a lot of the horror stories of working online I think really see that coming in so you didn't you didn't expect it um, and but for a lot of people they hear about all of these horror stories about like how it is working from home not getting paid by clients blah 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 but then you kind of got on the lucky side of like, you didn't even know that was a thing. You were kind of yeah. blind to that. And then of course you kept getting better and better with your video editing skills. Um, and they're amazing um, without like, you know, and I know, and I know you're really great at it even when you were just starting out. So having that combo of not being too exposed to the negativity of working online, plus being a really highly skilled and very also um, charismatic person, you, you got like really good employers. So, with that, what what is it about editing videos? Because I know you, you chose it from, you know, between programming, coding a lot, or video editing. You were choosing between the two. What got you really into it? What got you sucked into it? I know it started as, as just a as choice, but you actually fell in love with it. So how do you actually fell in love with editing, like, videos? Well, because um, before, it was always my hobby to watch TV series. So I've watched almost a lot of TV series that, by the thousands actually episodes. I really enjoy watching TV series. And even YouTube videos, I watch a lot of vloggers, I watch a lot of business coaches, and I want and I watch a lot of ads as well. I'm probably one of the people who wants to watch an <laughs> ad there and not press the skip skip button in the in the bottom because I just wanna see like, uh, how do they make this ad? I wonder 
why it's effective or why is it mm-hmm. you know, why is it why is it doing well or why is it I wanted to know more about the the structure of videos whether whether how well it does and so on and so forth so actually um, compared with my hobby of watching videos before and my I believe a little bit of introverted personality it came to me as a more of a lifestyle choice video editing became more of a lifestyle co- choice yeah, and that's very interesting that you are, I like that you said here, I'm one of the people, probably one of the people who watches the YouTube ads and doesn't skip. Because that, that is, that, that does show that, you know, you stumbled into video editing. It was kind of a choice between two, but then you kind of fell in love with it. This is very, very funny and very interesting to hear. Okay, this is, um, in addition to that, um, after working for about, you know, like uh, several months already, I actually want, became one of the people who creates those YouTube ads where you have to <laughs> and, and what I found out was that, you know, like, uh, since the YouTube, like, algorithm doesn't, uh, won't allow people to skip within the first five seconds, so you have to generally catch the attention of someone in the first oh, yeah. five seconds, and that really makes a lot of the difference. So I've been watching even, even like, um, YouTube ads about Pancit Canton or something like that, where they have so they have really catchy things that happen in the first five to seven seconds. So it's really like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so with that, with with like kind of falling in love with a little bit with uh, with learning that you know you have to really have maximize the first five seconds of a, of a YouTube ad and all of that. What has been kind of your your favorite thing about being a video editor as someone who works online and edits for edit, edits other people's videos? Um, generally, it's not really so much about the craft, but it's more of the lifestyle. I like, since it is a creative um, online direction, meaning it is something that I can deliver on my own time without having to be timed by any client. I don't need any timer, productivity app that checks in that, hey, is fill it online at 1 a.m. in the morning. No, I don't have to do that. What I usually do is that I tell my clients that, hey, whatever content calendar you have, your content schedule, I will hit all of your deadlines, but I wish to work on my own time. And so far, out of all of the clients that I have delivered to, they have been really happy with that arrangement. I've always delivered on time, regardless if I sleep during their time zone or I sleep during my time zone or you know I work I work in the day and then or watch TV in the mm-hmm. afternoon and then work again at the night. I have complete control of my time and that actually is one of the benefits of being a creative creative um, online professional. So creative being graphic designer, video editor and um, basically but, output based. Yes. Yeah. yeah correct, correct. No, that's that's really cool. And I, I think a lot of people stress about that of of what if you know their client will ask them to stay up late or to make sure that they, they're actually working or they're they're uh, looking over their their you know screenshot on their computer and like making sure that they're actually working. With you, you've actually and you I know you deliver. I've seen you be able to, to deliver of, of of setting that as a way that you have kind of set up with your client that I'll get it done. Just don't you don't have to monitor me as much. Just know that I will get it done. And you've sh- again you've shown that over and over again. So do you have any advice? What's a common advice that you can give out to someone who actually wants to start becoming a video editor? Okay, so common advice number one: done is better than perfect. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Yes. So, because um, I I was actually hit by a lot of this this thinking before that hey I needed to have the perfect resume or I wanted to have the perfect cover letter, I needed to have the complete portfolio before I will able to start. And I want to have like the perfect mindset. I want to have the, the best internet connection available. I remember. Or even, or even like, wait, I, I need to upgrade my software first before I apply for work, which is actually very, very counterproductive. Mm. Um, yes, yes, actually. That is better than perfect. I believe that you can also be like, hey, uh, I will just apply right away even if I don't have anything prepared. No, I'm, I believe that if you have something prepare, prepared, that's good. You submit, but you can't also like just apply and submit without preparing anything at all. 
So maybe mm-hmm. you can come to war with a less sharpened weapon, but at least come to war with a weapon. I don't mm-hmm. think that makes a lot of sense. Yes. Okay. And number two, this is a lot. This this is something that I highly believe in. If you are starting out, you must deliver your best work, your best service even if you know that you are being underpaid because by treating your clients and your customers correctly, they will eventually keep coming back to you for orders and even send referrals your way. Because if you do a job well for them and they know, or you know, even by your own feeling, that they have generated sales from your product or output, they will have higher budget to give you for more projects. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah, so before I was trying to edit a two-hour podcast for $30, and man, that was really under work, considering that if you edit podcasts, it takes usually two to three times the amount of duration to edit one. So if, you're, if, you're, if your video takes is two hours in duration, editing takes it six to seven hours. So I did that for $30. It was not fun. But I knew that since I completed that project for being underpaid, I was able to use that project to show another client that was looking for podcast editing and gave him higher rates. And they loved it and so on and so forth. I I love that you said that. I love that you mentioned that because I know a lot of people who come to me saying that they really want to be paid $10 an hour and they have no experience. I'm like, no, try with one. If you have no experience at all, try with just one. And then you can put that on your portfolio. You can use them as a referral, as a reference, or you can use them as like, have them leave, ask them for a testimonial or a review on your LinkedIn, and then you're good. (laughs) And then you can start charging higher. Yeah, you can, you, you definitely, you definitely, especially if you're starting out, do not complain too much about your pay because eventually it will come to you accept whatever low paying job you probably could in the beginning as long as it contributes to the correct learning path that you are on if you say you want to become a really good graphic designer and you're ter- you're taking a really low paying underpaid job of like editing picture quotes or whatever basic basic um lightroom editing editing then you just accept it because you know that it creates a portfolio, it creates learning experiences, and we're all about you know continuous improvement, especially now in the online career where there are a lot of people providing the same skill. So you must actually um, put yourself above the rest. So that's what I believe. Oh yeah, and like a funny story that I always tell people is I used to to, to charge one hundred peso per five hundred article. I was fifteen years old, which was at that point that was my allowance for the day, so I was good. Pero I did, I did, but I, but I did start at that. I did start at, at char- uh, charging really cheap because I had no idea how to price myself online. I was again, I was fifteen years old, but then you know now I charge like a thousand pesos per article. Uh, so you know, it you you really have to start actually really start somewhere. So with that though, what is and you already kind of gave a lot of really good advice. But what is an uncommon advice that you can give for someone who's trying to break through their online career? Okay, so here I have two advices to give. And the first advice is connect in connection to the previous one. So my first advice is what um, is to do free work, completely unpaid, zero dollars, zero pesos, completely free work. So I got this idea from... Uh, One of my idols, Gary Vaynerchuk, I know that you probably watch a lot of him, but he has a ton of content on his YouTube videos with the title saying, give your best content for free. Because now that we're in a very competitive market, and especially a lot of people out there are providing the same quality work or same service you do, then how do you stand out from the rest? You have to offer them, hey, I want to work for free for your first project. And it actually gets a lot of employers on your front door, like asking you for work. Because um, if you think about it in the client's perspective, like let's say I want to hire Philip for video editing service for my YouTube channel. Okay, I will put it there somewhere in my application or in my interview that, hey, just to jumpstart on our collaboration, 
I want to give you free value up front and give you a free video with no watermarks delivered in full HD resolution. You can use it in whatever pro project you have, any social media, even if you don't hire me. They usually accept the job. And what I found out was, in the client's perspective, wow, this work looks really nice. But I don't know if someone else will be able to duplicate this kind of work. Maybe I should just hire Philip to do the second project and the third and the fourth. So that's my first advice. Always, as Gary Vaynerchuk said, always give your best content for free, but be smart about it on your second order, on your third order. Secondly, uncommon advice actually, is do something that will make you stand out from other service providers. So what I actually did during the start of my video editing career, when I was applying for work, is that I probably did something that not a lot of editors would do. And that was to make a vlog resume. So I will have probably have a, like um, a video of it somewhere here on the screen, but it's actually me talking in front of a camera, explaining to employers a demonstration of my skills, uh, what I can do for their business, their company, their product, and deliver it knowing that I didn't have much portfolio in the beginning. So, so me creating a blog resume meant that I no longer had to show employers portfolios of whatever I created in the past because knowing I didn't probably create anything but my video was already an example that I am very much qualified and I did something different than other people and and for me like I I when I first saw you because you, you kept telling me Leanne I, I have this I read that video resume and I'm like yes show me and you kept like wait 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 I wanted I wanted that like again I'm teasing you a little bit because I know I knew your perfectionist side before um and and you don't have it uh, anymore now uh but it's it's basically and I link it below the guys if you want to check that out it's it's a really awesome video resume but then I always say this all the time of you need to show employers what you can do before they even hire you you need to prove to them that you're a really good video editor you're a really good writer uh, like it's always going to come to if you're going to be worth it what they're going to be paid for because they're a business they could be a really small business and all that they can do is actually just hire you so they can you know have help for their own business so you want to be worth it for them you don't you you have to think of it both sides like you were saying philip that you have to look at it from the client's perspective or the employer's perspective of am i going to actually help them make money it can't just be i i want to make money i want to provide for myself on the other side can i actually help them make money can i actually help them make more money that then like they pay me because of course they can't run a business if they're just paying you. <laughs> they have other expenses. They have other things that they have to pay for as a business. So uh, it's it's definitely looking at that perspective of if you were the employer, of course you want to hire an employee who covers who, whose expenses is not going to be more than how much you make. So you have to keep that in mind if you're starting out online. So if someone right now wanted to start becoming a video editor, what would be a small baby step that they can do to get started? An advice that I would give actually to those who want to start it up, but want to start it up the correct way is number one, take classes online. I recommend take classes from like Udemy. I understand that like YouTube has a lot of free content to watch, but I don't recommend it because you might not get the correct order or sequence of videos to watch. So Udemy, Coursera, and other platforms have a structured outline for getting people started, starting completely from zero. And they also give out working materials, so this separates them from the rest. So paying for classes actually gives you a sense of accountability. Even Nas Daily, if you check out his recent video, he himself said that he hates free because it doesn't give the accountability or the driving force to actually make you say, hey, I paid money for this, I want to feel like I just didn't waste this. Now, actually Udemy is not expensive. If you are planning to build a career out of it, you want a monthly income, you want to generate tons of uh, money from your freelancing online profession, paying a $20 course on Udemy 
is surely an investment that you should consider. I, I agree with accountability. I agree with, you know, you it pushes you over the, the next level. If with, with When you take courses, when you, like your example of $20, if you keep that in, $20 is like a thousand pesos, right? But then if you get a job because of that, that's like minimum, minimum 15K a month at least. That's like if you have like a basic, basic job of with you not doing really much, that's minimum 15k so that you already made like 15 times of your original investment so it's so worth it so it's something that that a lot of people forget a lot of people and i have like a lot of people chatting me like hey can you just co uh, coach me for free and i'm like no <laughs> i need you to pay me so i know that you're serious about this i need you to like make sure that you are really committed and of course like for me i'm putting up a lot of my time and making sure that you you get to the next level so like it's it's a next level commitment for sure for a lot of people if they actually invest their time and their you know their own money for it even if uh they they it's it's a weird jump when it comes to you know doing online courses especially if you've never done it before but it's definitely worth again you spend 1k to get 15k a month that's a month so it's definitely worth it okay so that's a really that's a really good like, like piece of advice for for especially for someone starting out. So, so with that in mind, with you already having the attitude to always improving, you're always you know looking at courses, you're always looking at ways that you can have experience that you can see what else is out there. What's the next step for you? What's what's something that you are looking forward to in your online career? As of the moment, I am currently riding out my journey as a solo player freelancer. So right now, since I started this, I probably made around 150 to 250, 250 videos already for different clients since the first wow. half of the year. These are ranging from ads, testimonial, blogs, corporate training videos, even the Instagram swipe up now ads. Yes, I make those stuff, Instagram TV, real estate videos, and even podcast audiograms. So I still have a ton of demand, unaccomplished, but... I just want to say that I really am fortunate. But in your in regards to your question, maybe in a year or so, my goal is to eventually leverage my work demand in probably forming my own BPO. Cool, cool. And that's and that's definitely a path that, you know, it's it's inevitable. If especially if you're if you're someone who shows a lot of your client value and they keep coming back and again and again and again, and I think you are that kind of uh, person, then it's it's always it's almost like it's just going to happen that they're going to have more demand from you than you can handle. And of course, the natural thing is is being able to start like an agency or a business out of it. So, how can others support what with what you do? What how can like if someone was right now looking to help you out and then or wanting to hire you also, how can they find you? And how can we basically just support you in that goal? If you need video content produced, you can definitely hit me up. I'll be leaving my social media handles up on the screen somewhere here. Also, you can visit my Fiverr page store and where you can make an order directly or by simply visiting my store page, even if you don't want to make an order, it will definitely help me with my SEO visibility. If you're looking to start your own YouTube channel or grow your current one, I'd be happy to give you some tips and tricks from a video, video editor's perspective, completely for free. So I might take you up on that for sure <laughs> myself. Okay, so if there was anything that you could tell to your past self who was just starting out working online, you know, Philip, a year ago, what would that be? What would that advice be? My first advice would be uh, trust the system. And this doesn't mm -hmm. only apply to me, my past self, but towards everyone who is looking for a different alternative to life through an online profession. Trust the system, looking for work, submitting applications, not hearing back from your clients and employers can be a daunting experience. And just be patient. Know that a lot of this is a quote unquote, um, as we said, it's a numbers game. For every hundred applications you send or for every hundred clients you talk to, at least one person is going to reply to you. And if you treat that person right, as I said earlier in one of my earlier tips that always deliver your best work, even if you're underpaid, if you deliver your best work to that one client out of the 100 that you submitted to, I'm sure more and more blessings and opportunities will definitely come your way. So the, awesome. yes, the second tip I would actually give myself, my past, my past self, is that 
you should also consider investing in a career coach. This applies not only to online careers, but as well as the offline careers. Surprisingly, one of I am an editor also for a medical career coaching business. And I know for a fact that the head coach in that business pays another coach to coach him on how to coach. So you'll be surprised that this applies to a lot of uh, a ton of life coaches out there. They are not their own source of knowledge or whatever you call it. They actually pay someone else to coach them, coach other people. So you'll actually be surprised for that. So actually, uh, I want to end in this note that if you're looking for a coach but don't know where to start, I would highly recommend the virtual Ate here on the screen with us. <laughs> Follow her on her social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever you, whatever ways you can reach her. She will definitely put you in the right direction in forwarding or starting your online profession. So yeah. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> That's like the ultimate testimonial right there. <laughs> so thank you. Okay, so thank you so much, Philip. I actually really enjoyed this. I haven't, I don't talk to you as much as I should probably. Um, and you, you, I'm very happy with to see where you are um, versus someone that I met a year ago. You have definitely surpassed a lot of the things that people usually have as a hurdle when they're starting working out online. Uh, and it's just awesome. You, you shared a lot of really good things about this. You shared a lot of really good shortcuts and insights for a lot of people out there who are struggling who are trying just really trying their best or just kind of don't have the map or the blueprint so thank you for for being here thank you for sharing your what you know what you've learned in the last year so again thank you and i'll link all of your links below so guys if you want to check out philip on everywhere because i because i helped him set up everywhere um you can check out all of his links below uh and then so i hope you guys learned a lot of things about how to be a video editor the shortcuts again from philip on how to be a kick-ass video editor so if you guys haven't already make sure to hit the subscribe button right there to make sure that you guys get my videos every sunday and thursday and also to of course check out these other two videos right here and all of the other videos that i will link down below so you guys can get started on your career online and i hope you guys have an awesome day remember that small steps matters i'll see you in the next video bye